Hello, and welcome back to Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church of North Pratt Empowerment Hour. As always, we are so happy and excited to have you guys join us again today for another video. So today's lesson topic is freed from worry. Wow. And our into life and summary of the lesson for today will be coming from Sister Jeanette Hughes, who is one of our youth Bible class teachers. As always, we hope that you guys are liking our videos, sharing our videos, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel. So let's get into it right now as Sister Jeanette Humes gives us our into life and summary of the lesson for today. Good morning, Empowerment Hour. Let's begin with prayer. Lord, forgive us for worrying and not trusting you as our dear Heavenly Father. These and other blessings we ask in your name. Amen. The subject of the junior lesson is, why worry? The adult lesson is, why do you worry? At the end of this lesson, we will be able to contrast Jesus' teaching about worrying and our own anxieties. We will learn to appreciate God for everything in nature and we will embrace the opportunity to trust God for everything that we need in life. When preparing an empowerment hour lesson, we should always take a good look at the background of the lesson, including the people, places, and time. By doing this, we can get a better understanding of what happened then and relate it to the current lesson. Is the grass in your yard just something you cut to make your lawns look nice so that it does not become an eyesore in the neighborhood? In biblical times, grass could have been considered a commodity. Fuel was scarce. So withered plants of all kinds were used for fuel. The term in verse 20 that is translated as grass actually includes all kinds of vegetation not classified as trees. It included the beautiful lilies mentioned in verses 28 and 29. Any of the magnificent plants that displayed God's care in creation could end up as fuel to be used by the people that God loved, that he provided for, and that he valued. Wealth has its place in the background for this lesson. It is one of those blessings from God. The book of Deuteronomy mentions the promised land and its fields, vineyards, cattle, and good harvest. These descriptive words translate to prosperity. Paul talked about the monetary donations that the church of Corinth sent to the poor churches in Jerusalem. He, he referred to it as grace and mercy. The Bible recognizes the fact that material wealth brings with it great dangers. There is a possibility of failing to recognize that God is a source of our blessings. Then there are the problems that we can create by envying and greedily hoarding the things that money can buy. We all know that God taught in parables, telling stories to help the people understand his message. As Jesus and the people sat on the mountainside, right before them were the lilies of the field, and birds were flying overhead. Jesus explained to the people that they were much more important to him than these birds and lilies. These creatures made no provision for life, they were both beautiful, but because of God, they didn't have to worry about anything. You know that he made us just a little lower than the angels. He loved us from the very beginning because he created us in his own image. The first outline in today's lesson is earthly examples. Matthew, the sixth chapter, 25th through the 30th verses. Jesus tells the crowd not to worry about the necessities of life, food, and clothes, because our Heavenly Father knows that we need these things. 
if we stress and have excessive concerns, it shows that we have a lack of trust in our all-wise and loving Heavenly Father. Does worrying really change anything? Our Heavenly Father will supply our needs just as he supplies life for us. Jesus said that we must trust God because we cannot do these things ourselves. Sometimes when it's just me all along talking to God, I have found myself saying, Lord, I don't have anybody but you, but you are all that I need. That is exactly what Jesus is teaching. We are totally dependent upon him. If we do God's will, he will supply all our needs. If you have any doubt about God's being a way maker, think about how he has kept and provided for us during these last 15 months of the COVID-19 pandemic. What he's doing right now and what he has promised to do. He compares the lilies to clothes for us. There is nothing more beautiful than the lilies but according to the background for our lesson, these lilies are here today, but there's a possibility they will be cast in the fire for fuel tomorrow. Don't spend too much time worrying about your clothes or what you're going to wear. Spend time studying the word of God instead. After the comparison of man to the lilies, it was similar to what every preacher pastor does at the end of a sermon. We were taken back to Calvary just to show how much God loves us. The second line is anxiety's antidote. Matthew 6, chapter 31 through 34. It tells us what we need to do to avoid an anxiety attack. The phrase, take no thought, doesn't mean that believers should just wait passively on God for his provisions. But it does mean that we should carefully and prayerfully plan for our future. It means that all of our efforts and planning should be made with the assurance that our God knows exactly what we need and he will supply those needs. Verse 31 explains it all. If God takes good care of his simple creation, those simple creations are the birds and the lilies mentioned in the lesson, then we know that he will take good care of us. Worrying does not allow us to trust God. It leaves us hopeless and fearful. The assurance that God will take care of our day-to-day -day needs allow us to spend time on those things that are pleasing to him. God has told us that he's a jealous God and we must put him first in all things. When we do this, we have the blessed assurance that the things that we need for survival and those things that we want for comfort will be given to us. When we began to take Christ's promises seriously, we began to experience the joy that comes with complete trust in him. If we were downstairs in our classroom this morning and it was just me talking to the children, I would talk to them about an earthly father and the heavenly father's love and I would use myself as an example for them. Most of them still might not understand the value of the lilies in the fields and the birds of the air, but if I were to tell them that my earthly father and how he cared and provided for me, they might better understand the lesson. I can remember way back in elementary school when I was at Scott School and the teacher called the roll and she might ask a student, why were you absent from school yesterday? And the child might reply, I didn't have a coat or I needed a pair of shoes. Because of my earthly father's provisions and the way that he provided for me, there was never a time that I missed school because I didn't have 
shoes, a coat, field trip money or whatever I needed for school. My earthly father living with provisions from his heavenly father provided everything that I needed. I never had to worry about the necessities of life. All of my physical needs were met. Then my earthly father and my earthly mother brought me here to what we now call, what, what was once called Mount Moriah Baptist Church. They had provided for my physical life and now they provided for my spiritual life. Mother taught me at home and Mrs. Hendy Brooks, Mrs. Loreen Blevins, Mrs. Mildred Woodry, and Mrs. Velma Jones Taylor taught me about our Heavenly Father here at Mount Moriah. Teaching is important for the next generation to survive. Dr. Wesley at Greater Shallow made the remark in his television broadcast last Sunday that people worry because they do not accept the vine paternity of God. The Bible makes it plain. It tells us who he is and what he does. Psalms 23 and 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's personal for me, but I can include each of you and say, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. Parents, please spend more time at home teaching your children how God provides for them. And once our church has opened for a full service church, please bring your children to Empowerment Hour. We need them and they need us. I want to be sure that they know that they don't have to worry because our Heavenly Father will provide all of their needs according to his riches in glory. But we have to trust and obey him. And most of all, don't worry, but be happy in the will of our Heavenly Father.